Hey, welcome back. We're in the book of Exodus today, chapter 37, verses 1 to 29. In fact, this is probably the only time in the whole book we're going to do the whole chapter in one devotional. And we're not going to read all those verses, but let's read the first. Now Bezalel made the ark of acacia wood. Its length was two and a half cubits, and its width was one and a half cubits, and its height one and a half cubits. He overlaid it with pure gold inside and out and made a gold molding for it all around and so on and so on. And it's as it's been described, as we've already discussed in previous places, uh, God laid out to Moses what this would look like, how it would be. And uh, here we're kind of down to, again, a lot of rep repeated pieces, uh, but we have the actual, it's actually being built. Uh, this is like they're actually doing it. Like, you know, the... Elon Musk talked about this starship plan. He wanted to make this ship that could travel, uh, take large cargoes to Mars to colonize Mars. But it was just, at one point it was just talk, but today they're building uh, rocket after rocket and actually launching them. So Musk is kind of in this, uh, this phase, you know, the active uh, building phase of his project. And uh, here we have uh, chapter 37, it's describing the actual building. Uh, what, what lessons can we draw from this? Like since we've already kind of talked about a lot of these pieces in detail before in other chapters. Well, what's interesting here in this chapter, you can read through the whole chapter, and what will you find? That the detailed instructions that God gave, now these are actually being, uh, I guess we could say, actualized. Now they're building it in detail. It's coming out the way that God, God designed it and and described it in detail for Moses. And now the craftsmen in the spirit of God are building it according to that detail that Moses was given. So what God has called for, God has made possible and equipped the workmen and now it's happening, it's being done and it's completed in the way that God said he wanted it to be. So some people say, well, we can never please God. God is perfect, we're not perfect. So, you know, at our best, it, everything's awful and, and all that. Well, okay, so there's some points there, but what's interesting here, I think that's a misrepresentation. Uh, God does not ask us to do the impossible. Jesus, the Bible says that through Christ, all things are possible. Friend, through Jesus, you can overcome. You can live God's way. You can please him. And so here we have an example of that. God has called for this to be done. His people now are doing it. And when it's all inspected here, we'll get to that in a few days, uh, Moses is going to give it, you know, thumbs up. We got there. We're there. So what God wanted is what he's going to get. Now, the question for you and I spiritually is, what God wants for you and I spiritually, is he going to get that? Are we interested in giving God what he wants? Do we just feel like, oh, it's impossible. Uh, God is asking the impossible of me. Or are we willing to say, God has called for it. He wants it. It can be. I am determined that in his strength, it will be in my experience. Something to ask ourselves. And as we look at the fact that God calls for a work, and then God, unless we interpose a stubborn will, God will accomplish his work. Just as he builds a sanctuary and he gets it done, he's working in your heart and mine if we allow him and we want him to get it done. Okay, we'll see you next time for starting in chapter 38, verse 1.